What's up guys, Stan here from Rocky Creek. Just got home from work. It's a muggy, muggy Friday. Uh, guys, it's been a super busy week. Um, but anyways, I wanna come to you today and I wanna do a little video. Actually, this is gonna be probably one of my first product review videos. Now, this product has not at all been given to me. I'm not at all sponsored or been asked to give them a review. This is just nothing more than a product that I purchased about a year ago to try out. I believe it to be successful. I just picked up another one at the store. I'm going to be installing it here soon. And I thought, hey, why don't I go ahead and share this product with them? Because I haven't seen too many homesteaders using it. And maybe it's not effective. And maybe I've just been really lucky for the last year. But I believe it to be effective. And I'll share with you why here after just a little bit. So what product am I talking about? I'm talking about Night Guard Solar. I came across this product because when I got my first set of piglets, we were looking at, you know, concerns being new to piglets. You know, you worry about everything you can think of. And we didn't know if coyotes or some other kind of predator might attack the pigs when they're small. I wasn't in the position to run electrical at that time on their fencing. And so I was looking for an affordable option that might deter predators. And when I was researching online, I was coming across this product. When I looked at reviews, this was the original now there are other ones out there that are other brands and slightly vary in their design but they essentially are trying to operate under the same function and the idea is that it has a red light right here that is solar powered and it will emit a flashing red light and the idea is that a predator will see that red light and it will kind of spook them or kind of make them hesitant to come over to that area um, and I'll show you some examples and some signs that we've seen since installing this why we think it's actually doing what it needs to do. So we got to get these animals fed anyways. So while we walk around the homestead, I'll show you where I currently have these um, and I'll show you where I plan to put more and we'll unbox this one and I'll install it and show you how simple this product really is to use, especially if you're a rookie like me at a lot of homesteading stuff. So let's go ahead and get these animals fed and we'll talk some more about it while we're on the way. Let's go. All right, guys, like I said, just got home. We're going to head over here. We're going to start off with Mater first. And that actually works out pretty good because Mater's pen is actually, like I said, when we got our piglets, that's the pen that they used to be in. And so that's where we got some of these installed, and I'll show you where they're at. Little girl swinging around on her swing. You say hi to everybody. Hi. Did you have a good day today? Yeah, I was sleeping in the garage. You were sleeping in the garage? Sweeping. Oh, sweeping. I was starting to wonder what in the world my wife was doing to her while I was at work, make her sleep in the garage. Glad we clarified. How you been, brother? Say hi to everybody. Oh, what's up, my man? Guys, Mater's been enjoying this pool. I've actually put water in that thing several times, and every time I come home, it's about halfway down and dirty. So that's telling me he's using it pretty good. You liking your pool, brother? Huh? Hey, you been liking your pool? You just want to eat? So this is the pen, our, our original pig pen, which is now where Mater's home is. And this is where I initially installed two of these Night Guard Pros. So all I did was here on their posts, I've installed it. Now, it's, this is probably, I don't know, I'd say about three to three and a half foot off the ground. Um, my focus with this was more coyotes. And on the back of the packaging, it'll give you a guide in terms of, of where and what height to put it on. But all it is, is it's got like a durable plastic housing and you just run a screw right in the top. You peel off a, a layer off the top of the solar panel and it usually, I found it takes them about a day or two to charge up and then I've never seen them not work since then. We've even had some days where the, the cloud cover's been for three, four, five days and it still keeps working throughout that. It's just getting that initial charge for one to two days. I have the one right there and then I also have one on this end. You can see it on this post right here. So right here, I got a second one on this corner too, and it emits out there towards that field and that brush area. So one reason why I think these are working is because this particular path, we had a mother bear and two cubs, and I also had another bear that I'm not exaggerating when I say that it was every day to every other day, they would come across the front of our home coming from this direction, towards the front of our home and towards our driveway. Um, it's almost like, like deer kind of have a path. It was almost like the bears had a, a same path. Well, once I installed these, 
it was about a week later I stopped getting the bears on my cameras and the bears were getting I, I used to get them on my camera it was over about a period of about a month and a half to two months pretty regularly heading into that time of year I put these up like I said it was about a week later I stopped getting them on my camera it wasn't quite hibernation time so I really think these may have had something to do with let's it. Let's do us a check on these meat birds, see how they're progressing along. These guys, we haven't done a check on them in a few weeks. Let's take a look here. They're actually doing really well. What are you doing, my man? You trying to run up out of there? Guys, look how big they have gotten. They, these guys are growing so fast. Oh, you want to say hi? What's up, man? Hey, man. You want to check out the camera? No? Okay. Um, if y'all see there, they're using the nipple water a lot. I've actually had to fill it up twice now, so that's good. I am still giving them the regular water just in case, just because you can never have too much water for for your birds. So I got, I actually got three different types of waters here, so they can they can get their choice of whatever they want. So that's good. What's up, peeps? Y'all got some fresh water. Enjoy. So while we're here at the meat birds too, I want to talk about a second reason why I think that the night guard solar is working. So my plan is I do eventually plan to add two or three of the night guard solars to the actual mobile chicken coop. Now I'm not ignorant to, to the fact of that chicken wire keeps chickens in and not predators out. I understand that if I'm going to continue to use this mobile coop, I need to add hardware cloth or some heavier gauge wire around it in order to effectively protect the chickens. But the thing is, this used to be behind electrical fence. I got these guys. I haven't had time to get it and get it on there. And so I have purposefully been running them on the patch of grass along the pig pen because the night guard solar is close to it. And I did that hoping that since I truly do feel like they have kept predators away from this chick, this pig area, that it would ultimately, hopefully, deter them from even get to these chickens. Now, you all been following me. These chickens have been out here for several, several weeks. And with them being out here, this grass has gotten high with all the rain we've had. And I've had other friends of mine who have had their chickens attacked in other areas. And I've yet to have that problem. Could it be 100% luck? It's possible. But the only thing I can say is that I've yet to have my chickens attacked, even though I know a predator will get through that chicken wire if they wanted to do so. You know, it's a chance I'm taking. Could be a dumb chance. However, I really think that this has something to do with nothing messing with them for as long as they've been out here in just that mobile coop. So let's go down here. Let's get these piglets fed and let's get the egg layers taken care of. Your flies blowing in my face. The flies are blowing in your face? Yeah. Oh, hey, careful. Got a tick on me earlier. Keep an eye out for them, okay? I don't know if it's all the moisture we've had lately, guys, or not, but we've really been having a heck of a time with some ticks. Fortunately, I haven't been bit by one yet, but I've been finding them on me pretty regularly, and I have to keep flicking them off. I'm trying to stay on top of the grass to help reduce them down, but I definitely think we're heading into probably one of the worst tick seasons we've had in quite a long time. Y'all want some grub? What y'all eating on? Huh? You wagging your little tail? How y'all been? Can you split it up between the pans? Share the share the well. We gotta split it up, cause otherwise she's mean to Henry. She starts pushing them all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, their water's plenty full, so they're good on water. We don't need to mess with that. Yeah, that's much let's go over there and let's take care of the chickens, okay? Uh, I like picking them up. I want to split some of it up in the actual normal feeder and some of it up in the metal pan so over there. So the, ba the babies will get the metal pan and the, ch the chickens will get, like, the chicken thing. Yeah, they can each get some. Uh, Say bye-bye. What's up, everybody? Q-tip. Q-tip. Q-tip, quiet down.
There's always so much drama. I told y'all in previous videos, I use the pans because I find they like it more than that. That right there is your sign. We put the same food on both. And what does everybody go to? The pans. I'm telling you, they prefer the pans. I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting rid of this feeder again pretty soon now that we got all the chickens in here together all at once. Old Chloe dog here. We had to take her to emergency vet recently. We woke up one morning and her eyes were really bad shape. It was actually on Memorial Day. And we had to pay the big old bill at the emergency vet. They don't know what it was. They don't know if she got into something or allergic reaction. But good thing is it only took about two or three days of some eye drops. And she's she's healed up and she's good to go now. But there is another place. So I plan to put I plan to put another one of the night guard solars, I think, on, on this post. Or possibly this corner one that connects the chicken and the pigs. Um, but I do already have one on. Um, I bought one couple of weeks back the only downfall to my local store that does get them um, you know they only get like two or three in at a time uh, so bug them on so I have to check there pretty often um, but you can see right here I got one on this back corner post so it's pointing back down this way towards the field like I said where I've seen a lot of animals most of the time walking through and so far since they've been here it's worked out pretty well and I, I'm guessing it's working here only because the pigs have actually found comfort in this corner and I don't know if you can see where they've kind of worn down the dirt a little bit. Uh, my wife even just said the other day she was like the piglets must really like something in that back corner and I said why she's like I, they just they hang out there all the time they lay there all the time they just seem to really like it there. My thought would be that if there's signs of predators trying to get over in that part of the of the pen that I don't think they'd want to go over there. It's just a thought in my head. I could be completely wrong, but that's just another reason why I think it's, it's been effective by using those. All right, so the big pig, the little pigs, the meat chickens, and the egg chickens have all been taken care of. Um, we'll go over here, we'll check on the meat rabbits, or meat rabbits, that, that's what they were supposed to be was meat rabbits, and well, we know how that turned out. Now they just turned out to cute rabbits that we collect their poop, and that's the only reason why they're here now. Um, so we talked about we were going to be selling the rabbits. Um, every rabbit has actually been taken. They were all sold in one day. The last one, um, the last girl, is getting picked up today. So she'll be going to her new home. Luckily, they were all friends of ours. So I know they all went to some good places that will care for them unless they decide to use them as meat rabbits. So but they're doing good. This is the last of the babies, which is no longer a baby. She's more like a teenager now, but she's the last one. And she'll be going to her new home and then Miss Sweetie Belle can go back to being a bachelor. It is starting to heat up here where we're at. Um, so I'll be doing y'all video here pretty soon explaining um, how, we, how we manage them when it gets hot. Because believe it or not, the hot weather is rougher on them than the cold weather. So let's go back. Let's talk some more about this, this uh, solar light and why I think it's effective. So I'm at the corner of our house right now. And looking out this way... The one night guard solar sits right there on that corner of that panel. It emits this direction. Before I put that on there, just like we used to have the bears would come this direction towards us, the deer would come all along the front of our house. And we have cameras on our property and it would pick up the deer all the time. Well, we were having major issues with the deer eating all of our plants in front of our house mostly these lavender and i don't know the names of these i bought them at the store and i can't remember the names of them but this plant and this plant in particular they were eaten down they kept eating this one so much that it was about the size of this tiny one but this year since i've installed them the deer have yet to come up to the front of my house and have yet to eat this plant and this plant now is flourishing um, i can't ask for it to do no better and they have yet by now these would already be eaten down as well and they have not come up to the front of the house and they have not touched these so in terms of the deer eating the plants in front of my home the fact that i have one of these night guard solars in a straight line of sight where they used to come walking through 
I have not had them up here at the front of my house anymore. I've seen them on the outskirts of my property, some of them as many as five to seven of them at a time, but they have not come up here to the front of my house. That's the final reason why I think it's effective. So let's get this one unpackaged. I'll show you what it is, show you how we get it installed. All right guys, so I feel like my biggest threat of something happening right now is gonna be my chickens, uh, my, meat, my meat chickens. Um, we're to the point now, we're about a month out from processing these guys and I don't wanna run the risk of losing them. I only need two things in order to install this. I need a screw and I need a screwdriver. That's it. So let's get this thing unpacked and we'll talk about how we do it right here. So it'll open it up and you have the night guard unit. It's wrapped in plastic, which we'll get it undone here. Um, and then on the back, it kind of gives you a reference guide in terms of how high you need to put it for different types of animals. My biggest concern is with the chickens really is more of raccoons. All right, so I've got it all undone. Um, and once you undo it, it has this protective layer over the solar panel. I leave that on until I get it screwed to where I'm gonna put it. Uh, I just feel like that, that keeps a risk of me, the screw head messing up the solar panel or the drill slipping and doing that. So I always wait and take that off at the very end. These chickens typically huddle up in the very back as you can see them in that back corner. So I actually think I'm gonna mount this back here. Um, they tend to shy towards this corner. So I'm leaning towards mounting it about like so right there. So let me get my screwdriver ready and we'll get that taken care of. Guys, it doesn't get any easier than that. So you can see one screw and then it has this protective, it's a very thick like black rubber um, that's sticky. And you peel that off and it reveals a solar panel. The way the sun rises here, it's not gonna get sun right now. Um, and then if I needed to, I can remove this layer of roofing. This layer of roofing is only here from when I used to have the nesting boxes on the back of this but I don't need those for these chickens. So if it doesn't get enough sunlight, the sun rises where it's facing now. Um, and I think typically it'll get enough sun right there that it should get charged, but we'll double check. Uh, but if I need to, I'll take away those panels and I know 100% it'll get the sunlight it needs. So I think between this one on the backside, which is where they normally lay, and it's to the height that it should affect if raccoons come. And then I also have this one pointing this direction. And then there's one on the other end that's pointing towards the house. I pretty much almost have 360 coverage on these guys. So hopefully that'll give me the protection I need. So at my local store, these cost me about $20. Um, you know, yes, if you buy a bunch of units, it adds up and it does cost a bit of money and you could probably end up with cheaper options at that point. But for me, I just kind of pick them up here and there as I need to and it spreads out the cost and it doesn't result in me having to try to get a expensive solar panel for a fence charger or trying to run electrical out there for a cheaper type of a fence charger so for us right now i don't have any reason over the past year to not think that it works um, and until i'm proved otherwise you know we'll still get them here and there for different areas as needed if y'all ever use a similar product or this specific one you know let me know did you have and did it fail i don't want to keep spending my money if it don't work but as of right now, I have no reason to think that it doesn't. So guys, I got some good news. Right after I got that night guard solar installed, uh, the last person showed up to get the last rabbit. So all the baby rabbits are gone. They're at good homes. So we are officially sold out of the baby bunnies. Uh, so I want to give you a quick update on our seed starts. Guys, it, it, we planted those, what, a few days ago, a week ago? Check this out in, my, in, in the little cheap patio greenhouse. Hey, my cucumbers died in the garden, but these suckers exploded out that soil. So those are looking awesome. These green bean plants are huge. 
So we should be able to get these cucumbers out there in the garden very, very soon. The tomatoes, look at that. All of them have produced. Not only that, but both seeds came up on all the tomatoes. Cabbages are starting to poke through. I barely got one poking through right there. Come up here to the smaller ones. These ones are a little slower going. Uh, the okra is starting to pop through. Um, that's supposed to be okra too, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, okra right there. I got one little, tom uh, two tomatoes coming through. So hopefully these want to get going here real soon as well. So guys, those seed starts have done awesome. I can't be happier with how those seed starts turned out. I've also ordered some more seeds from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds, so I'm waiting on those, and hopefully we can get some other ones started here real soon. I wanted to get some planting done today, um, but we just, you know, we, didn't, we haven't had flooding rains, but after we had the flooding rains, we've had a few days of some pretty good hard rain. The, the ground just cannot dry out. It's just, it's still so, it's just so muddy and just nasty right now, pretty much anywhere in my yard. So I really need to give it about another day or two um, of some good sunshine, which is what looks like we're about to have. Um, and then hopefully we can get some more planting done here real soon. Guys, if y'all haven't tried a night guard solar and maybe you're in a position that, you know, you don't have the money maybe for electrical fencing um, or for like a Premier One netting or something like that, and you're just looking for some form of protection, you may look into giving it a try. I tell you one big area that I'm looking to try this out in the future, but I read a review from a guy who owns a huge orchard and was having problems with deer eating up a lot of his product in his orchard. He said that he pounded in wooden stakes, I believe it was every 100 yards in his orchard, and he put one of these back to back on the posts down each row of his trees and, and the clearings. And he says it made a tremendous difference in the deer issue in his orchard. I know my biggest problem now is we don't have the deer and predators as best as we can tell from our camera footage and what we've seen near our home or near our animals now. But I do still struggle with the deer getting to my fruit trees that I've planted that are down at the front end of my property along the creek line. Um, you know, that's probably about 50 yards from our house to where those are at, down the hill where they don't get line of sight of the current ones. So I really do think I'm gonna try to do one of these posts with two of these on it and see if that don't significantly reduce what the deer are doing to my, my orchard. So guys, that's gonna wrap up the video here today. Um, just wanted to share with you a little product that we've been using, also update you on the seedlings and a few little things going on here. We're in big time preparation mode for a new addition here on the homestead. I think that'll be a big surprise for you all. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll like that. Guys, we, we thank you. We thank you for this amazing journey. Um, I never thought that in you know, just a few months, you know, we'd be closing in on 500 people. And that's, that's mind blowing to me. It's awesome. Um, it, it motivates us to keep doing what we're doing. And it, it feels great just to have a, a further support network. You know, people giving advice, people giving words of encouragement. It's an awesome thing. And, and what we got going on in the world today and stuff that, you know, people worried about the pandemic, people worried about the financial crisis, people worried about, you know, just some hatred that's going on in this world. You know, one thing I've learned about the homesteader community is that in all the forums that I, I participate in, the, the, the chat sessions of other people, the vlogs, to me, that is probably one of the most friendliest, most tight-knit, willing to help each other kind of group there is and the fact that i'm closing in on 500 of you all that are, are willing to go on this journey with me it, it means a lot and i appreciate it you know if we can get that 500 mark that might be a big achievement there and we may we may need to go ahead and do us another another giveaway and maybe do a couple hats but you know we'll see where, how that goes when we get there but guys i just i thank y'all i appreciate you y'all take care of each other take care of your family and those close to you and we'll see you here real soon on the next video. Y'all be good.